um, uh, Lias Kankorla. Drug misuse continues to be one of the most significant challenges facing our country. It is highly destructive. I, mean, and just I think you were to propose the amendment. Oh, yes, I was going to do that, but I'll do it now. If I may formally move the amendment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, drug misuse is highly destructive, has devastating effects on individuals, relationships and families, and on communities and society in general. Cannabis is the most widely consumed illicit drug in Europe and in Ireland. There is a substantial body of clinical evidence documenting the health and social risks associated with the use of this drug. Government in Lascaux Corley is strongly of the view that we should maintain the current system of strict controls and uh, regulation of cannabis in Ireland. For that reason, we would not be supporting um, Deputy Thayinga's motion, and I formally move the amendment. However, can I say, in case I don't have the opportunity to say so later, that I agree with what deputies opposite have said about the necessity and the importance of debating these questions, and I have absolutely no objection uh, whatsoever to uh, the people generally in the media and most of all in the Oireachtas debating these issues, largely for the reasons actually that were outlined by Deputy O'Sullivan, if I may say so, earlier on in her contribution. The rationale for the government's position is set out in the National Drug Strategy, which aims to tackle problem drug use across the five pillars of supply reduction, prevention, treatment, rehabilitation and research. One of the principal objectives of the strategy is significantly to reduce access to all drugs, particularly those drugs that cause most harm to young people, and especially in those areas where misuse is most prevalent. The Drugs Prevalence Survey 2010-2011, carried out by the National Advisory Committee on Drugs, found that cannabis was the most commonly used illicit drug in Ireland. The survey found that trends in recent and current use had remained stable in comparison to a similar survey carried out in 0607. However, the survey reported that lifetime prevalence of cannabis had risen to 25% by 2010-11, up 3.4 percentage points since 06-07. In this motion before the House this evening, Deputy Fannigan calls for legislation to regulate the cultivation, sale and possession of cannabis and cannabis products in Ireland. He has not tabled a bill, at least not at this stage, Corla, but rather has asked the House to call on the government to introduce legislation. It is not strictly uh, at all true for Deputy Boy Barrett to say that um, the, the motions that are before the House this evening have any bearing on a bill, because there is no bill of, uh, at all before the House. As is well known, these issues are already covered under the Misuse of Drugs Acts 1977 to 1984. Under that Act and the regulations made thereunder, the cultivation, production, preparation, sale, supply, distribution and possession of cannabis is prohibited, except for the purposes of research and the growing of hemp. The government has no plans to alter or repeal the current strict legal controls on cannabis and cannabis products in Ireland. However, we do recognise the claims made in respect of the potential health benefits of cannabis-based medicinal products, such as Sativex, for patients suffering from certain conditions such as multiple sclerosis. Accordingly, while it is not government policy to legalise cannabis or its use, provision is being made for the availability of cannabis-based medicinal products by way of an amendment to the misuse of drugs regulations currently being finalised in my department. This follows on from the receipt and assessment by the Irish Medicines Board of a request for authorisation for such a product to be available on the Irish market. As Minister with Responsibility for the National Drug Strategy, I maintain close contact with all of the statutory agencies, government departments and the community and voluntary organisations involved in addressing the problem of drug and alcohol misuse in Ireland. As I mentioned earlier, our work spans across the five different pillars. Each of these aspects is of critical importance. In this regard, I think it is important to say that while law enforcement through the criminal justice system is an essential element of our policy approach, as is the case internationally, we must also give close attention to the health and indeed the education dimensions of addressing drug misuse. I am well aware of the international debate on this question. Earlier this year in Ecuador, representing the Irish EU presidency, I co-chaired a conference held along with the countries of Latin America and the Caribbean dealing with the global drugs problem. There were, of course, differing perspectives there on many aspects of this extremely challenging issue, including on the subject of legalisation and decriminalisation, in particular of cannabis. It's important for any government to be aware of international debates and experiences, and we are no different than any other country in that regard. Cannabis, cannabis extracts and cannabinoid substances such as THC, which are contained in cannabis, are subject to international controls in the 1961 United Nations Single Convention on Narcotic, Nar Narcotic Drugs and the 1971 United Nations Convention on Psychotropic Substances. Ireland is a party to these international conventions and consequently has agreed to create and maintain offences for the supply and possession of controlled substances, including cannabis. The case is sometimes made, Las Concorla, that criminalisation of drug use does not work or even that it is counterproductive. 
As policymakers, we should always be prepared to listen to reasoned argument. However, there is a significant body of clinical evidence which demonstrates that cannabis misuse is detrimental to health. Physical and mental health risks are particularly associated with long-term or heavy use of cannabis by young people. In 2004, the National Advisory Committee on Drugs published a study entitled Overview of Scientific and Other Information on Cannabis, containing evidence that cannabis use is detrimental to health, and this has been backed up by other international research. The risks include increased chances of de developing lung and throat cancer, mental health illnesses such as schizophrenia, increased frequency of seizures in epilepsy, and depression. It can also lead to other health problems such as cardiovascular effects in susceptible individuals. The smoke from herbal cannabis preparations contains all the same constituents apart from nicotine as tobacco smoke, including carbon monoxide, bronchial irritants and cancer stimulating agents. There are strong indications that people who are regular users of cannabis but not tobacco develop more symptoms of chronic bronchitis than do non-smokers. Of particular concern to me, and this was referred to by Deputy O'Sullivan, are the findings of a 200, 2011 NACD study regarding the increased potency of THC in cannabis product in recent years. There is evidence in Las Concordia that cannabis produced in Ireland, which can be grown quickly, has a higher potency than imported varieties. The question of higher potency is also an issue for our UK neighbours, who saw it as a compelling factor leading to the reclassifying of cannabis in 2009, thereby increasing penalties associated with possession and supply. A central aim of the national drug strategy is to promote throughout society greater clarity, awareness and understanding of the dangers of drug misuse. The promotion of healthier lifestyle choices among young people is at the heart of substance misuse prevention. I cannot overstate the importance of the work we do to try to prevent young people from being involved in drug use in the first place, before it becomes an entrenched habit and a dysfunctional way of life. Making this drug available, even where subject to severe restrictions, could potentially lead to increased levels of experimentation with drugs by young people. This in turn could lead to increased long-term and sustained use with the real risk of significant and adverse effect to the health of users. We need to learn also from our experience in relation to new psychoactive substances. We're all aware of the proliferation of head shops in Ireland in the late 2000s. The increase in recreational use of new psychoactive substances posed significant potential risk to users. The fact that these substances were legal, hence the name legal high, gave comfort to those people using them that they were not in breach of the law. Government acted swiftly and decisively through controlling approximately 260 substances, as well as through the enactment of the Criminal Justice Psychoactive Substances Act 2010, which made it an offence to sell, import, export or advertise psychoactive substances. These measures led to a sharp decrease in the number of head shops. Law enforcement work continues in order to control the availability of these substances through the internet and other means. But there's no doubt that reducing access plays a vital role in reducing usage. The NACD overview of new psychoactive substances refers to survey findings indicating a pattern of reduced use of new psychoactive substances among a subgroup who may be described as recreational users. It's likely that this pattern of usage reflects the impact of the May 2010 government ban on a range of substances. Accordingly, Las Cancorla, if we were to legislate to allow for the cultivation, sale and possession of cannabis, we would be acting contrary to our core policy objective of reducing availability and access to harmful drugs. And it does not follow that legalisation of the kind being advocated would reduce the level of criminality associated with the illicit drugs market. Were cannabis to be legalised, it presumably would be very strongly regulated, possibly heavily priced and with a much lower potency level. The illicit market would no doubt continue and provide a cheaper and stronger product. Consequently, any benefits such as those suggested by Deputy Flanagan must be set against the likely continued existence of an illicit and indeed criminal market. As I've already stated, Ireland is a party to international conventions on the control of illicit drugs. In this respect, the EU Justice and Home Affairs Council of Ministers adopted a resolution in 2004 requesting member states to take measures to discourage personal use of cannabis. So Ireland's position cannot be considered purely in our own national context. We cannot act in isolation. We must be conscious of the position in other EU states. It's worth noting, noting also, Elias Kankorla, that we now have in this country a comprehensive government framework setting out a vision for a healthy Ireland and the actions we need to take in order to attain uh, this vision. Our objective is to improve the health and well-being of the whole population, increasing the proportion of people who are healthy at all stages of life and protecting them from threats to health and well-being. We need to minimise all risk factors, 
if individuals are to be supported and motivated to make uh, healthier choices. And can I just say, by way of brief response to um, uh, the contributions of uh, colleagues opposite, to repeat um, what I said already about the uh, absolute uh, uh, um, propriety of our having a debate in this House on these issues. And I would like, in fact, us to uh, be able to engage in the Oireachtas in uh, debate across all of the uh, various uh, threats and issues and challenges that we have in the area of drugs and alcohol. I was recently delighted to um, see that the government uh, was able to approve a, a set of proposals brought forward by me in relation to the area of alcohol, and that for the first time ever, we are now going to have a public health alcohol bill which is the first time ever in this country we've addressed the issue of alcohol in public health legislation, including addressing, by the way, some of the issues Deputy McGrath raised some moments ago in respect of, of access in supermarkets and so on. There's absolutely no objection to debate. But what I would say with respect to Deputy Flanagan is that there really is, that, that, that there really is no reality to, as it were, uh, suggesting that uh, legalisation of cannabis is not a radical proposal. Even if one agrees with his proposal, whether one agrees or disagrees with it, it is a radical proposal. And it simply is not uh, uh, credible to ignore completely the health evidence, as Deputy Flanagan did. Deputy Flanagan did not make any reference, of course, to the speech. I don't think the word health, he was talking, about, he was talking earlier about, about doing word checks. I think if we did a word check in Deputy Flanagan's speech, we'd be unlikely to find the word health. And it's simply, there's no reality to having a debate. If we want to listen to each other, if I listened very carefully to Deputy Flanagan and certainly to Deputy O'Sullivan and others, we have to listen to each other. We have to have regard to what's happening internationally, absolutely. But we cannot exclude from the debate completely the very genuine and serious uh, risks that exist to health and that have been, for example, set out in recent days in the context of this debate uh, by a number of psychiatrists and others, other professionals working in this field. So let's not exclude any of the discussion. Let's not exclude any reasoned argument. And if we're going to be, uh, respect one another's point of view, let's listen and listen to all of the arguments that are made on all sides, uh, as it were, of the, of the House. So th I say that there's, there's no reality, Alaska and Corlett's suggestion, that there's no downside or there are no potential negative consequences arising from legalisation. It simply is not credible for Deputy Fanning or anyone to suggest that. I know he has to put forward his argument with all the force that he can muster, but he has to have regard to the case that is against him and the case that is against legalisation, and that's there too. So let's have that kind of a debate by all means, but let's have regard to all of the evidence, let's ha have regard to all of the arguments, and let's not imagine that, uh, th you know, that taking the, the kind of step that Deputy Fanning is advocating here in his motion, not a bill, because I repeat, there's no bill here in his motion, wouldn't have uh, 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 negative consequences, because manifestly they would.